Hey guys, I'm Angela Braniff. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I am a mom of eight kids and I have just started the baby led weaning process with our youngest who is seven months old. He actually turns eight months old today. And we've just started the feeding process with him in the last week. And so because this is my eighth child and because I've done this a handful of times in various forms, I've gotten a lot of questions about baby led weaning, how we do it, what it even means and all of that stuff. So I thought what I would do for today's video, I'm gonna try to make this concise. If you are new here, hello, welcome, I am long-winded. If you are not new here, you know this to be true. Therefore, I have literally taken notes and broken it up into sections in an attempt to make this more concise. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the benefits of baby led weaning, uh, how to know when to start the baby led weaning process, as well as a few little helpful tips and pieces of information that I think are important to know. Before we get into the video, just a friendly reminder that if you're new here, you should consider subscribing. I make lots of videos on these various topics of parenting and motherhood and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of content, you should definitely subscribe. Uh, and as always, if you hear anything you like during this video, give it a thumbs up because that helps me out. And leave me a comment down below and tell me either what is your favorite food to give your babies first, like what's your favorite food to feed your baby for the first time, um, or if you don't have a baby that you're feeding, tell me what your favorite food is. I love to talk about food. It's arguably one of my favorite topics. I love food. Let's go ahead and, and move on, shall we? Let's, okay. So the whole idea of baby led weaning is based off of a book called, da -da -da -da, no surprise, baby led weaning. Um, I will leave a link to that book down below in uh, the description box. The popularity of it's grown. I have never read that book. I just sort of based my baby led weaning off of advice from other moms and just off of some research and stuff like that. And again, like I said, moms who'd gone before me, if you will, who had done it and shared with me what worked and what didn't. If you are the type that likes to have all the information, then perhaps you might wanna pick up that book. And then uh, there are also a ton, a ton, a ton of Instagram accounts now and even podcasts and things that talk all about baby led weaning, give lots of advice, recipes, like all kinds of stuff. So that is all out there to be found in the great interwebs. I am a basic lady though. So I have done some variation of baby led weaning, not always to a T, that's the thing, just like anything else, you gotta do what works for you. Baby led weaning is not for every baby. There are absolutely circumstances under which this is not uh, the right way to begin your baby on food. I'm just here to share with you the skinny, the nitty gritty, if you will. So also the name baby led weaning is a bit of a misnomer because you're actually not like weaning them off of milk. Um, it's really, you're still giving them formula or breast milk, whichever way you are satiating your baby milk wise, uh, you're still doing that. This is just supplementation to that uh, as they begin to slowly reduce their milk intake later. Uh, but really in the beginning, this is just getting them used to foods and eating and all of that. It is not meant to be their main source of nutrition that still comes from breast milk or formula or whatever that may be. So let's talk about a few of the benefits of baby led weaning. Uh, there has been lots of research about this, lots of experts who have, who have all kinds of abbreviations and such after their names that are far smarter than I um, have researched and provided all of this information for us to know some of the benefits. But some of the most notable benefits are helping babies to really improve their fine motor development, fine motor skills. Through this process of feeding themselves, uh, it's supporting all kinds of development that's happening in their brain um, and things like hand-eye coordination, their pincher grasp, their chewing skills, their ability to smash something up, move it to the back of their mouth, swallow, all that kind of stuff. We've also found that for our kids that we've followed more closely to like traditional baby led weaning, um, those children in our home have always proven to be less picky eaters and enjoy foods with seasoning and flavors and they're not like, give me a chicken nugget and that's the only thing I'm gonna eat is a chicken nugget or an apple. Um, so we have found that when we've used the baby led weaning process, it's really helped to develop our children's palate and interest in different types of food and flavors. The other added benefit is that it helps babies to develop healthy eating habits and self-regulation. So here's the thing, when we spoon feed babies food, often we can keep feeding them past the point they're full. Now at some point they're gonna start to like spit it back out, not want it, blow it in your face, and you realize like, okay, they're done, they're done. 
but you still might have already fed them past the point of being full. Whereas when you do baby led weaning and they are responsible for self-feeding, uh, they don't overeat. They stop eating when they're full. And it's really great for teaching them that once they feel that full feeling, that's the time to stop eating. Uh, so it really helps them sort of regulate that. And that's obviously beneficial. Lord knows when I see a box of Oreos, all of my self-regulation goes away. So it's still important to have though, should still work on that. The next question I get asked all the time is, how do you know when to start? Because I said this when we did like Benjamin's six month update, I said he wasn't ready yet. And then even in a seven month update, I said I still didn't think he was quite ready yet. There are certain signs that are laid out by the authors of the book and by people who like teach this as a method. I follow those, but then I have a few added uh, or more stringent guidelines for my own kids and that's just personal preference. Um, but one of the things is, your baby needs to be able to sit in a high chair unassisted. You can't, they can't need to be like tilted back. They need to be able to sit up in a high chair and sit there unassisted without pillows stuffed around them or anything like that. I, over the years, have just, just learned that for my babies, their actual signs of readiness tend to be not only when they can do that, but when they can also sit unassisted on the ground. So for most children who are developmentally sort of in this like typical developmental track, that will be around six months old. Um, Benjamin, you guys know my little crazy man Benjamin is like all over the place crawling but couldn't sit. And so that was why, that was one of the reasons why uh, we delayed starting baby led weaning with him because he still couldn't sit. Even though he could crawl, he still couldn't sit. And that's just something that again, I have found to be a necessary skill. Uh, so that's something we look for. Uh, also like their head and neck strength, they need to have really good head and neck strength. Uh, this is very important uh, because you do not want to do anything that's going to you're not, you don't want to start feeding them before they're ready because all you're going to do is cause a lot of choking, gagging, and other things that are going to stress you out and it's and potentially be dangerous for the baby. So for us, uh, that is obviously very important. And per the guidelines for the experts, it's also important. So I'm not an expert, but I'm just telling you. And then the next thing they say is their ability to move food sort of back into their mouth, like from the front to the back to swallow. That's obviously kind of hard to know if you haven't fed them anything yet. I feel like one of the things that I look for, and I feel like I'm probably gonna butcher this, but when they're not doing the tongue thrusting as much, uh, that's something that if they are still just, when you try to put anything in their mouth, if they're just, their immediate reaction is to uh, spit it out, uh, then that for us is kind of a sign that they're not, they're not quite ready yet. They're not gonna be able to pull that food to the back and swallow it. Uh, those are some of the signs that we look for uh, to make sure that our babies are ready to begin the baby led weaning process. And then how do we actually go about it once we're like, okay, you are ready. Now we have done everything from um, uh, our, my daughter Shelby, who is 11 and healthy as can be. Her first foray into eating was at the Cracker Barrel. She had green beans and mashed potatoes. And I just put them on a plate in front of her and she picked them up and ate them. And that was, she was six months old and that was that, that was her first food. Uh, now you really should begin with one single food at a time, one ingredient of food at a time. Um, that is really important for being able to determine if your child has any allergies. If you feed them some kind of pasta casserole or something that has 12 ingredients, Maybe they're allergic to something, some spice or something in there, and you're gonna have a really hard time deducing what it is they're allergic to. Uh, so it's really, I have always found, and I feel like most pediatricians recommend this too, whether you're doing purees or baby led weaning, one ingredient at a time, keep it simple. I like to start with things like avocados, uh, sweet potatoes, zucchini, squash, uh, pasta, broccoli. Now here's the other thing, and this is the thing that I think really freaks people out is when people talk about baby led weaning or when you see pictures, like you see a baby, uh, like eight month old baby holding a drumstick, right? Like a turkey leg from the Renaissance Fair. That's an exaggeration, but you know what I'm saying? And you're like, what? I mean, what? I'm feeding my baby like oatmeal. Why do you give your baby a turkey leg? Here's the thing. Babies uh, will regulate uh, the size of the bite that they take. And one of the things that we neglect sometimes as parents to recognize is that this, at this age when they're starting to eat, they usually don't have this ability yet. They can't pick up a piece of food and put it into their mouth. They palm everything like a bear, right? They palm it. And so we like to give our kids things that can be uh, cut into long strips 
uh, things that are ab they're able to pick it up, hold it, and, and, and take bites off of it. They are less likely to choke taking a bite of chicken themselves off of a chicken leg than if you cut up tiny cubes of chicken and that cube of chicken just happens to be the exact right size to stick in their throat. So it's actually interesting because we have this tendency to want to like chop everything up, but for babies to learn that regulation and the correct bite size and everything, they do, they do a pretty good job of it. They do a pretty good job of it. Um, so things like broccoli, uh, the, the other thing is you need to make this food soft. So don't give your baby, not, I don't feel like I should have to say this, but maybe like a raw piece of broccoli. That's all I'm talking about. Uh, steaming food, making it really soft so that when you pick up the food, you can squish it and feel it like squishing in between your fingers. Um, and you know, it will be easy for them to like smash it up in their mouth and, and chew it, chew it and swallow it. Uh, babies don't need teeth to start eating. I feel like I should have said that probably earlier because a lot of people, that's again, something people are like, well, they don't have any teeth. How can they eat a piece of chicken? They can eat a piece of chicken, believe it or not. Um, but hold off on chicken. Start with something smaller than that, but, uh, or simpler than that, not smaller, simpler. But like broccoli, a broccoli florette, if you will. They can hold that in their hand like this and um, 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 numb, like numb, gnaw on it. Um, you, I mean, here's the thing, again, you don't want to, to ever leave them alone with any of these foods. Like you should be right there watching the whole time that they're doing this. So if for some reason your baby is a, a overly aggressive eater, has a very large mouth or something and stuffs the whole broccoli for florette in their mouth, that is problematic. But you want to make sure that it's just a big enough piece that they're taking little bites off of it. And then once, they, once you see that they have developed that pincher grasp, uh, then you can start cutting things up and doing some different, you know, shapes and sizes of things. But even and you don't even have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, some some people don't, but it's definitely more advised that if they can't pick it up like that, then it's going to be harder for them. They're going to palm it like this, a whole smash of it, and then like ah, all over their face, uh, which they're still going to do that anyways, like get it all over their face. But yeah, that's sort of. Um, and again, if you go to those Instagram accounts and look, you'll see lots of examples of parents baby led weaning, like the sizes of the pieces of food that they give them, how they do it, um, and recipes and ideas for how to like bake apples so that they're nice and soft, but you can cut them long ways so it's a piece that they can hold and bite. Um, so yeah, that is the sort of how to's of how to get started. Keep it simple, one food at a time. Once you know that they are not allergic to any of these foods you're testing out, then you can start adding in more types of food and get crazy with it, you know? I mean, who knows? By the time your baby's nine months old, 10 months old, they might be chowing down on some taco casserole with you or spaghetti carbonara or something like uh, any of the fun like family recipes that we share. Like. Those are things that our kids started eating at very young ages. So anyways, okay. So the, the sort of extra things that I want to add. So we've talked about the benefits. We've talked about how um, to know when your baby's ready to start. And we've talked about how to actually start. But a couple of things that I think are really important to note. This first one, guys, I don't know if you've ever heard me use this terminology, but I use it frequently in describing what it is to be a parent. This thing that makes your butt pucker. It's a thing that makes your throat drop down into your stomach. Uh, when, like when you walk to the edge of a cliff and look down, um, that feeling is the same feeling that you get when your baby starts to gag for the first time. Um, it is very, very important to recognize that gagging is a very normal part of learning to eat. Uh, it is something that you are not going to escape. Your baby is not going to escape. They have to, they, they have to do it in order to understand how to bring food back and move it through their mouth and through the back of their throat and all of that. Gagging is different than choking though. So understanding the differences between the two, recognizing them so that one, you're not overreacting when they gag. It's really hard, but you gotta like try to stay calm. Cause when you start to panic and are like, wow, you start whacking them on the back, um, that makes them panic and then associating this kind of negative thing with eating. And that can you know, make it even harder to kind of get through this, this feeding process and learning to eat process. Um, so you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna create any extra fear or anything strange like that by uh, panicking, but recognizing the differences, making sure that before you start this process, freshen up your uh, Heimlich maneuver skills, freshen up your, go to YouTube, you're already here after you're done with this video, 
hop on over and look for an infant Heimlich maneuver video just so that you know that if your baby chokes on a green bean, you know what to do. Um, and that you can recognize the differences between gagging, which are like watery eyes, still breathing, still have full color, red face, like that kind of thing, and choking, which is no sound, no breathing. Do you understand what I'm saying? That was not cute, but you understand what I'm saying. Look up the difference, make sure you know the difference, make sure you know how to respond um, to actual choking, and then we don't have to like have panic situations, okay? And I just wanna say, there's no judgment here. I have eight children, and I still, fight the urge when I see one of my children gagging. It's like that moment where my brain needs to decide if they're gagging or choking, and it's panic inside every time. The outside, I try to keep it calm. The inside is like, what is happening? Panic, okay? So there's no judgment for me. The second piece of that is to make sure that the foods that you're using are not encouraging choking. Um, things like grapes, popcorn. Hot dogs are a culprit. They're a big culprit. Here's the thing we have done with hot dogs. We do like the all beef hot dogs and I cut them into sticks, like hot dog sticks. Sounds disgusting, but it makes a long piece of food that, not, not a whole hot dog, right? I cut it in fourths the long way and then in half. So it's one stick that they can hold and chew on. Uh, so it's not the round shape that fits perfectly in their throat. It's not even the half of a round shape. It's a quarter of the round shape and it's in a stick form. So it kind of just looks like a match stick, if you will. If you want to do hot dogs, that's how I do hot dogs. But avoiding foods like that or really sticky foods, um, nut butters, things like that, peanut butters, things that are um, going to make other foods stick together and then potentially stick in their throat. So try to avoid uh, foods that encourage choking, especially during this process of them just learning um, how to manage eating, learning how to chew and all of that. And then the last thing is, and this is so funny to me because I posted a picture on my Instagram of Benjamin um, eating and somebody commented and was like, I don't know why, like why would you let your baby feed themselves? I would never do that. I lay my baby down and I feed them like this. Um, and it's just funny, babies are going to, they're going to be messy. Uh, that is part of how they learn. It's, it's obnoxious to us who really wants to live in a very like clean and uh, tidy environment all the time, but babies getting messy uh, and learning as they eat, like that's part, of, that's part of how their brain figures it all out. It's part of how they learn, use all their senses, they smell things, they get different textures, they figure out how to hold something that's slippery and all that kind of stuff. So it's all important parts of development. Uh, it, it flies in the face of our senses uh, where we want to sit at a table and just calmly eat a meal because really your baby should be eating at the table with you. When you guys are eating for family meals, like scoot that high chair right on up or uh, wherever it is, we have like one of those chairs that attaches to the table. So they're eating with you. Uh, they're watching everybody else eat. Babies are amazing intimid intimidators. They are that too, but imitators. Um, and they like to see what we're doing and, and do the same things. So I think that's an important part, but understand that there's going to be a lot of mess involved. Like this is just part of um, babiness, right? Babiness involves a lot of mess. Uh, as does baby led weaning and quite frankly even like pureed food and stuff like that I mean they whack the spoon one time and it flies everywhere so it's all messy I do also want to add that we give our children utensils uh, we have tried some of the like baby baby utensils before but Honestly, once I discovered uh, this brand on Instagram called Ryan and Rose, this is not sponsored and they didn't send me anything. I bought everything with my own monies. Uh, they have this baby's first like spoon and fork thing. So basically one end is a really deep spoon. It's made of like a silicone. So it's pretty flexible, but not too flexible. And the end has like a much deeper cavern for the spoon so that they can scoop something and it will stay. It won't just kind of, you know how a regular spoon is like just a little bit, it gives you like a little dip. Uh, this gives you like a hole. Uh, like half a donut hole um, for a spoon. And then on the other side, it's like a circle with a hole in the middle of a fork. So it's like a claw. 
except it's not like the annoying claw that you pay a dollar to get a stuffed animal and you can never get anything out. This is an actual like pick something up, trap it inside, and then they can eat it. So it helps get them used to that like stab something, put it in your mouth, scoop something, put it in your mouth, all the things they need to do with utensils to learn to use them properly. So I think that's a fantastic product. I will link it down below. By now, I got that a couple years ago, so by now I'm sure there's competition and lots of others, although maybe she patented the design and no one has stolen it from her, but um, I will link hers. Feel free to look yourself for other items, but I really love their products. All right, guys, that's it. That's everything I got for baby led weaning. Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, if you are interested in the baby led weaning process, I just wanted to share a little bit of my insights. This video was nowhere near as short as I wanted it to be. I got nothing to say. I had a lot, I had a lot of notes. That's, a, I don't have any excuse for myself. I am what I am. I'm gonna accept someday that I just have a lot to say about these topics. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, tell me down below what you like to eat, what you like to feed your baby, all of the things. Uh, and I will see you guys again very soon. Bye.